yes we learned about uh, html in our uh, classes so now we are going to move on with this course that is css now what is css right so what exactly is css now css stands for cascading style sheets now css describes how elements are to be displayed on the screen paper or in other media css saves a lot of work it can try it can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once now what does all this statement means is very simple that now these are all style sheets now css stands for cascading style sheets this is a basically a style sheet where you give different styles to html elements now why is it uh, so important because html was never intended to contain tags for uh, formatting a web page now html's use was only to display the content on the web page not to design it now css solved a big problem right yeah, it solved a big problem by adding style separately we can use css to style the html elements now inside the html elements we can only add the content that's it the rest styling and all we can do it in our css now that was a major breakthrough for css when tags like font and color attributes were added to html 3.2 specification it started a nightmare for web developers yes true why because html was never intended to contain styles and all but when they added font and color attributes it became a, a big task for web developers because they had to learn font they had to learn color they had to learn styling in html that was a very difficult task so development of large websites where fonts and color information were added to every single page became a long and expensive process yes true because if you want to uh, give a different color to a html element if you want to give a different font for a html content it was very long process and it was very expensive and that is why it was a nightmare for web developers right so to solve this problem world wide web consortium that is w3c they created css now css removed the style formatting from the html page that's true why because the css were a complete different uh, css was complete different uh, styling uh, right so html inside html we need not use any styling commands but in css it was a great relief for all the web developers why because in css we could have done the style command now this is about the syntax of css now syntax of css just like how you have elements in html that you have to put an anchor tag you have to put a less than symbol or greater than symbol or you have different types of uh, html elements just like that to use css we have to use this syntax basically you, you can see that there is a selector over here this selector is an html element and inside that we open a flower packet and this is the declaration now here this is the property what do you want to change for that html element and this is the value what value do you want to give to that html element for example color blue h1 if you have given a text called well, hello world now color of that hello world will change to blue if you give this command again font size is a property and if you give 12px it will return 12px that means the font size of the html element content would be 12px right so this is about the syntax of css now the selector points to html you want to style selector points to html you want to style simple if you if you want to sell if you want to give a styling for an html element you have to select that particular html element that is called as selector right the declaration box contains one or more declarations separated by semicolons now separated by semicolons yes because you cannot directly give the commands different uh, properties why because it will get confused and you don't want to confuse the commands there so that is why you are given semicolons for each different property value pair so this works like a key value pair for every key value pair you have to put a semicolon right so each declaration includes a css property name and a value separated by a colon that's what i told you there's a property name and a value now you can also call it as key value pair right so css declaration always ends with semicolon that's what i told you you have to end 
all the declaration with semicolon only then it will work and also it is surrounded by curly braces that is the flower brackets you have to mention the flower brackets right so where is css in html5 now there are three ways to add css to html5 one of that is called as inline the second is internal the third is external so let us go to internal now sorry inline now so inline css css code is along the html tags now what does actually inline css do is you can directly add the styling commands inside the html file directly by adding style is equal to the property and the value so let's take an example and let's check the output of this yes i have opened the visual studio code here i've created a file called css demo.html so what i'm going to do i'm going to first get the structure of html first now the structure is there what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add a paragraph and i'm going to give it as welcome to techquid labs so now i've created a paragraph now i'm going to see the output to see the output just go here right click open with live server it will get started and you can see the output welcome to techquid labs so now i'll give styling to this using inline css to start styling using inline css you have already learned in the previous classes that is style equals i'm going to give a background color for this that is background color red red is the value this is the property background color is the property and red is the value so i'll save it and i'll just go and see the output you can see the background color has been changed to red so using inline css you can directly style the html elements going back to our ppt this is the syntax just i showed you the output of it now if i go to the next slide you can find a website on your left and also you can see the there is a round mark here where you can see that they have styled it with inline css style is equal to width 627 px height is equal to 44 px left 33 px font 12 px right if you want to see something like this if you want to go to a website and see how the style has been done you can you can go to our website that is techwidlabs.com once you go to techwidlabs.com just right click here you can see inspect element there so when you click on inspect element you can find so many things here you can see here right so these are all the stylings which they have used as you can see there are styling elements available here if you go here you can see there right here you can see style width these are all called as inline css right if you can go and select you can select any of the things here and you can see the styling which they have done so this is how you can see the inline css styling the second type of uh, css way of putting it is the internal css now css code is enclosed between style tag within the head tag right so one way of doing it is inline css where for the particular html element you are going to give the style but here inside the head that is the head section there you can add a style there also you can do it using this syntax and you can see the syntax that is a selector again the same thing selector property and a value this is the selector that is the paragraph this is the property color and this is the value right you can close it like this so let us check the output of this and let us do something now what i'm going to do is i will remove all of this styling statement here and i'll just put p there so right i'm going to use head here i'm going to put style this is internal style sheet what i'm going to put is p flower bracket open that is i have selected the paragraph here now what i'm going to put color i'm going to give it as red so semicolon is very important you have to end it with semicolon so what did i tell you was in inline css you don't require selectors and all those things but when you are using at internal you require 
selectors and property values right so now what i'm going to do in the previous inline statement what did we give we, we gave the background color as red but here we are going to give the text color as red so if i go and see the output of this what i'll do i'll go here and open with live server now you can see the text color has been changed to red but if i give it as background color here i'll change it to background background color red you cannot even see the text you cannot even see the text why because both the text color and the background color are red so what i'm going to do i'm going to go here and change it to blue so if i do this you can see a red background and a blue text right so this is how you can use internal css yes but one more thing we can do we can add uh, maybe h1 we can add one more h1 and add uh, hi everyone right so this is the h1 tag so for that h1 tag what i'm going to do after this command again i'm going to use selector that is h1 after that selector again open the flower bracket and inside that what color i'm going to give i'm going to give color as i'm going to give color as black now if i do this semicolon if i go check the output you can see it has been displayed like this now black is common so what i'm going to give i'm going to give some different color if you want to give you can see the colors available here you can see there are gold colors now i'm going to give green yellow just save it open it you can see the color has been changed now right if i want to give a background color once again background color i'm going to give it as red once again semicolon close it right you can see a red color background has been given but here you have to understand if you are using different selectors for this selector you can directly code it here you need not to put one more selector there right or if you want to do it the same way for all the things you can remove this you don't require this you can directly remove this you can directly add p comma you can add h1 so if you do this this also works right all these things are applicable to both p and h1 right you, you can use like this so this is what is internal css just like i told you this is a website and we can see inside the head they have added a style p comma div they have added this color white and hence you can see the difference between inline css in inline css it was in the html elements itself but in internal css you have the different style that is available inside the head right so whatever internal css you want to do it should be inside the head tag and also you have to create a style tag for it right now the last type of css is external css now you do not want to use inline also if you do not want to use internal also you can create an external file by naming .css the extension should be .css now you can write all the commands over there right you can see the syntax you just have to add a link for it that's it link rel is equal to style type of it is style sheet type is equal to text slash css and href is equal to you have given the file name here so let us see how to do it now in the internal we did all these things right so what i'm going to do i'm just going to copy this entire thing here just cut it and cut the entire thing now i just want this to be the html file now i'm going to create a external css file to create that go here and just add demo.css it should be saved in demo.css now whatever i have copied here i pasted it both p and h1 both the styling should be changed but here you don't require the style command since it is directly css file you don't require the style command so if you go and check the output just go to this demo.html it was our what was our file name we gave the file name as css demo.html just go open with live server you can directly see there's a the output has not been come why why is that so let us check what happened why because we have not added the source here right we have not added the source that is why we have not got the output so how to add the source just add in the head but head 
tag just add link rel is equal to style sheet because css is a style sheet then we can add type type of the it is text slash css the type then we have to add href href equals we have given a file name as for the css we have given the file name as demo.css so control save close the link control save now go and check the output the output has been displayed now why is that because in the last one we forgot to add this command this statement this linking this is what this links from this html to that css can you see the link you here you don't have to use the style commands you just have to write all the selectors and the property values that's it now this particular statement will link this html to that css that means in this css file whatever the commands has been given here it will be applied here so it properly works like a inline and a internal uh, css right now we can add one more thing called uh, maybe we, we can add one more h2 here h2 we can add tech with labs right but here i have not given h2 right so what i'm going to do i'm going to add h2 here again open it what i'm going to give i'm going to give background color as black and i'm going to give the text color as white so i'm going to give it as white semicolon close it if i go and check the if i go and check the output you can see the output now the white color text is appeared here the black is the background because we have given the black color here now if you want to give it as green maybe you can give it as green control save it go back you can see the text the background color has become green now and the text remains the white right so this is how you can use external css now this is very important to know because external css files are very important because there are lot of if there are lot of html elements if you use inline commands and in internal css it would be a major problem because there would be thousands thousands of lines of codes now it is very difficult to debug so that is why we are going to use external style sheet where it is completely assigned for only styling where you do not have any tags you just have only selectors and property value pairs right here there is an example of a website you can see that they have added link rel is equal to style sheet href is equal to style dot css type text slash css right so it links this html page with a particular style dot css usually the css file names are given as style dot css you can use any other name as well right yes this is the most important topic you guys have to understand specific specificity ranking by proximity now what is exactly this now what happens whenever you are coding in html and css now when you use inline functions when you use inline style commands what happens html reads the inline style first then it reads whatever the style is available in head then comes the external style sheet and then comes the browser defaults now what does this say this says the ranking between the inline internal and external sheet so if there is external style sheet and if there is internal style sheet and if there is inline style sheet, all these three, for example suppose if you have an html element and for that html element particularly you have created all the three style sheets now you have created external also you have created internal also you would have created inline also now what happens here is whatever you have given in the inline only that particular style will work because that has the highest priority here you can see the priority it has the highest priority you can see the priority here right but if you have not written inline you have written head and external commands for the particular html element again it will be head section where you have given the internal style sheet that style will be selected because it has the second priority again the third priority goes to external style sheets and the fourth priority is obviously the browser defaults browser defaults has some style so that style will be taken as defaults right so this is about specificity ranking by proximity now now we will see an example of actually how it works now what happens here is you have created an external style sheet right you have given the id the id name we have given in html that is my id 
we have given a color called blue here right but in internal style sheet we have not given any style so what happens is since we have not given any style in the internal sheet what happens here is the blue color is defaultly taken from here can you see the difference you can see the blue color which is taken from here right but internal style sheet now what happens here is if in internal style sheet if you have given id red color your external style sheet will not work because the ranking is highest for internal style sheet not external style sheet this is the second priority first priority is your inline second priority is your internal third priority is your external style sheet so what happens here is you have given inline sheets here so red color will be taken as default and you will get red color not blue color okay in this what i'm going to do now is i'm going to remove all the things let only p be here p i'm going to give background color as maybe black i have given background color as black here but in css demo.html what i'm going to do again i'm going to put style is equal to what i'm going to put i'm going to put background color as red so you guys can tell me what is the answer now should it be black or should it be red so let us check the output the output here is red the background color is red why because i told you already the internal that is inline statements have the highest priority but now what i'm going to do i'm going to remove this now i'm going to add here i'm going to add style again p i'm going to add a background color as maybe green if i add this and if i go and check the output now you can see it is black right so you can do that as well or you can directly use different colors here and you can check the outputs of it now here i have given black now if i give green here now i'll go here and i'm going to give it as green here if i go here and check you can see it is green so i hope you guys understood what exactly we were talking about this is about specificity ranking so highest priority goes to internal style sheet right and the next priority goes to external style sheet so this is about proximity specificity moving on we are going to learn about selectors now what is a selector css selectors are used to find the html elements you want to style so p is a selector here this is a syntax which you have given p is a selector there text align is a property there center is nothing but a value there right so we're going to see how many types of selectors are available in css and what are all those right so this slide will tell you there are different types of selectors available here you can see dot class you can see id selector you can see element element there are different types of selectors which we can use right so let us move forward to different types of selectors first type of selector which we are going to study now is id selector so to use id selector in css how do we do it now id selector uses id attribute of an html element to select a specific element now you are not creating a separate id in a css file you are using the same id which has been allocated which has been given by the user in the html file so let us see what exactly to do now what i'm going to do now is can you see i'm going to just delete the styling statement first now i can see there are three different statements which i have already written here so what i'm going to do i'm going to assign an id to a paragraph here so what i'm going to do in the p section i'm going to place space here id is equal to i'm going to give it as lab so we have created an id called lab now now how do we access an id from a html file in a css file so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go to the css file here now you cannot write p directly here why because since you have given an id allocated to this the syntax for selecting the id is hash and p now if you go and see the output you are going to get the output now what is the what should be the output background color green so let us check 
let me go here first and open with live server right you will have to give the proper id name here so let us go back and check id name is labs so here i have to give it as labs right you cannot just use the tag name here just remember if you have given an id you have to use a id name here not the p tag so id name is labs let us check the output now i have given the background color as green here so output should be background color green so what will i do i'll go here i'll go back and open with live server right you can see green color has been displayed now the background color is green now so i'll give the color of the id as uh, black so color black now go back and see the output you can see it is black color here so if i give the id as white color here color color white so the text displayed will be white so you can see white color text has been displayed so this is how you can use id selector or to remember points here id selector is nothing but if you are giving a html element a specific id id is equal to labs you have assigned a specific id called labs to a paragraph so what happens to access this you should use hashtag then the id name not the tag name you have to give the id name here so after the id name you can give all the properties you can give the values you can give n number of properties and n number of values right so this is how you can use a id selector now this is about id selector once again i'm going to tell you guys that hashtag is used to access an id hashtag is used to access an id so now you can see some example here that there's a website on your left and the right side it says hashtag awards hashtag awards dot left hashtag awards dot right these are all the hash uh, ids which have given in the html file we can access using the hashtag no hashtag is highlighted here you can see all those things so using hashtag you can access any of the things and you can give n number of property value pairs for it so the next topic that is the next type of selector is called as the class selector now instead of id sometimes we give it as class now to access a class selector instead of hash we are going to use it as dot dot center now what i'm going to use now i'm going to check a, take an example and i'm going to show you how we can do that i'm in my html file now i'm just going to create a new division division class name class equals i'm going to give it as maybe 1 2 3 i'm going to give class name as 1 2 3 again i'm going to take a paragraph now so in the paragraph what i'm going to put i'm going to put hello world so now if i want to see the output again but i'm going to give a styling now so go back to demo.css after this instead of hash we have to put dot what is the class name here i have given the class name as 1 2 3 so you can have 1 2 3 again open the brackets again what you can do you can add the different color for it maybe i'm going to give the division color as red close it now if you want to see the output go and check the output you won't get the output why because the class should not be numbers the class should not be numbers you have to give a text here so here what you can do you can just go here and you can just give a text called hello again come back here change it to hello dot hello you cannot give a number please understand that when you do an error here it will just show you you can see if i give number there is an error here it will just that editor will just show you the error you cannot use a number in a selector so that is why i'm going to give it as hello now go back and see the output you can see the color has been changed here so again i'll give a background color as black so what i'm going to do i'm going to put background color as black now again save it go back you can see the background color has been turned to black and the red color has been displayed on the text so this is how you do a class selector now remember the difference between a id selector and a class selector is nothing but this this is hash and this is dot that is this is dot and this is hash and here also when you are doing it is id equals the id name here it is class equals class name so this is how class selector can be done 
Now, after the class selector, we have an example of it. You can see an example. They have given it as dot news sync, right? So I just showed you that in ID selector, you have to use hashtag, but in class selector, you have to use dot dot class name. So this is how you can access the HTML element inside a CSS file. So the next selector is the universal selector. The universal selector selects all the HTML elements on the page. Now this is usually possible with CSS and HTML that you can select all the elements and you can style for all the elements properly, right? So let us do that. So I'm in my example now. So I'm going to tell you how you can use class selector, sorry. You can use universal selector here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these HTML elements. Now what happens is whenever you select all these elements, you have to properly code for each and everything. And it is a very cumbersome task. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use star. Now once I use star here, I will open the brackets and I'm going to give it as background color. So once I do this, it will be applied to all the elements and also just remember already you have given id selector and class selector their colors so it doesn't matter there i'm going to change it to white here since the background color is back i'm going to change this to white now you can see apart from these two things all the elements will be given black ground color as black if i go and check the output here you can see the difference right you can see the difference here entire screen is back but since you have given the colors for this that is why it is there on the screen now this is background color color red so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna give select all the elements and i'm gonna give the color as white and let's check the output let us check you can see all the things are available now why is it because you have mentioned all the elements and you have given a color to it as white so that is why you can use all you can if you want to use all the elements in the uh, HTML uh, uh, page you can use star selector that is called the universal selector and you can use all the things there right so this is about universal selector so here we have given an example where star is selected to make the color white you can see an example here star and we have given color white so that is how you can use it the next selector which we are going to learn about is called as a grouping selector now grouping selector selects all the html elements with the same style definition to group selector separate separate each selector with a comma this we have learned it already by without knowing that it is a grouping selector we have learned it already how i told you if you want to select uh, some h1 or h2 or p you can just directly okay i'll do one thing i'll delete all of these things what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna add p comma by using comma i am gonna select both the things so this is called as grouping selector now i'm gonna give background color as black now you can see if I go back and check the output. Now if I go back and check the output, you can see the output, the black has been given here. Now why is that? Because I have selected paragraph, I have selected H1 and I have assigned background color, right? If I give background color as white and check the output, you can see the background color has become white and all the text have been displayed here, right? So here also what I can do here, I can change the font size font size of maybe 10 px right i'm going to give it as 10 px and go you can see the 10 px has been changed the size of the text has been changed right for the paragraph and the h1 so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to give it as maybe 100 px and check go back see you can see that much bigger text has been displayed on the screen so this is how you can use grouping selector this we have learned it already by no without knowing it p comma h1 and also if you want to use div we have you this is the id selector go back and you can check the id selector here right it has been changed so that is how you can use a grouping selector yes in this slide it has been properly be given that h1 separate h2 is separate p is separate right but all the three has the same property values all the three elements has the same property values but instead of writing three different properties three different things so what we are going to do is we are going to combine all the things into one by just adding a 
comma here so this makes the code very easy and very easy to understand so this is how grouping selector can be used so the next selector which we are before that we're going to see an example so yes here they have they have just taken comma here and they have selected all the things instead of this they have directly selected all the things and they have done the things there so this also you can use this is called grouping selector so the next selector which you are going to use is pseudo selector that is class now what exactly is this a pseudo class is used to define a special state of element just remember it is a kind of very special state now for example it can be used to style an element when a mouse mouses over it for example hover where you want to go to the text and the text color should change now all these things are called as pseudo selectors right style visited and unvisited links differently style an element when it gets focus right all these things are like special status now to select all those special status we have something called as pseudo selectors just like an example we have hover so let us check how hover works i'm going to remove all of these things so what i'm going to do i'm going to put paragraph first now instead of remember always in styling statement you have to put like this so paragraph i'm going to select paragraph first in paragraph we have selected id right so hashtag labs and after that what i'm going to put i'm going to put hover but hover you can't have use hover like that to make sure to use hover what we are going to do we are going to select this p now this p or what we are going to do we are going to add one more p we are going to come here back come back add this p now let us go back this is p paragraph of this right so i'm going to give a styling to this so what i'm going to do i'm going to use p semicolon hover after this i'm going to add color so whenever i hover it should turn blue so now if i go back and check the output now i'm in the output mode and you can see whenever i go here it changes to different color so when mouse hovers over it it changes to the different color that is blue color as you can see here right if i go back it is black if i come closer it is blue color so you can do like this as well so this is about hover if you want to give maybe there's some more one more command what i'm going to give is i'm going to there's h2 command here so for h2 command i'm going to give red so what i'm going to do i'll put h2 of hover again color i'm going to give it as red so now if i go back and check what was our h2 comma h2 there h2 is techwood labs if i go back techwood labs it is red color can you see the difference it is red color so that is how you can use hover just like hover you can use different commands for example there are different pseudo selectors like active now active if i click active here and go and check the output you can see it does not change to blue color here but when you click on it it changes can you see this is what active does so like this there are dozens of pseudo selectors which are available and you can use all of those things to make your website more interesting so this is about pseudo selectors now here are some examples of pseudo selectors where they have used hover and they have used hover here and when you go and check here also there is hover when you click on buy license the color will be changed as you can see here the color of the buy license is white but when you go and check when you go and take your mouse to the buy license the color of it will change to green so this is how mouse hover is used like that you have active you have other different uh, pseudo selectors available you can use all of those things to make your website interesting so this is about the pseudo selector now we are going to learn about box model now box model is very important for css scripting now why is it very important why because whatever you program or whatever you write the code whatever you put the html elements and all those things it must be displayed on the screen of a browser in a browser you will be having this box model right now what is this box model so let us go ahead the box model you can see there are four different components of box model first component is margin border padding and content the content is where you write your content and padding is nothing but the space between the border and the content border is nothing but between the padding and between the margin margin is nothing but to the outside of the screen to the 
inside of the screen. So let us check it out how box model is seen on a web browser. I am in Chrome web browser. Now when I click right click here, when I click on inspect, you can see there's some different things available here, correct? Now if I go there elements, if I just click, you can see here, you can find different things available. When you scroll it down, you can find the box model, which is appeared here. You can see this is the content. The content is 369 into 238. This is actual content. And this is the padding which you have given. This is the border. This is the margin. You have given 56 here. And this is the position that you can ignore it. It is not important. These four things are very important. Content, padding, border and margin, right? So let us see what exactly this means. Now, what is the content? Now, content of a box where text and images appear, whatever content you want to give like H1, H2, H3, H4, paragraph, divisions, images, videos, audios. Now, where that part, where the content is there, that is called as the content box, right? As simple as that. The next thing is padding. Clears an area around the content. The padding is transparent. The padding is not at all seen on the screen. The padding is just an empty space which you can give between the content and the border. Just remember that. Now border is a border that goes around the padding and the content. Now in between after the padding you have a border. You can give a border space there. Right. So margin clears an area outside the border. The margin is transparent. Now margin you cannot see the margin as well. Padding and margin are nothing but empty spaces. But yes you can manipulate it. Like this is how you can manipulate it by giving width, by giving border, by giving padding, by giving margin. So let us go to borders and let's do borders now. Now borders, now CSS border properties allow you to specify the style, width and color of a elements border. You can actually do borders here. Now border width property specify the width, border color property specifies the color of the border. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this now and I'm going to check the output here what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove all the statements which i've previously done i'm going to go here i'm going to remove all the statements like this let the link be because we are going to type all the things in the demo css or i don't want it to be demo css just remove the statement whatever i'm going to style i'm going to style it here itself so now i'm going to create a paragraph first hello world i've created a paragraph called hello world now i'm going to add style statements here now if i want to add border here what i'm going to use i'm going to use first p then i'm going to use border style so border style should be solid right then border width i'm going to give it as border width i'm going to give it as 1px then border color so i can give the border color as well so i'm going to give it as black so i've used all these three things now so let us check the output go open with live server if i see the output you can see a border has been appeared around the text so this is what is border so what i'm going to do now is instead of writing three different statements like this i can directly write one statement that is p border I'll write 5px solid and I'm going to add black. So I'm going to delete this, right? So I'm going to check the output. Now you can see 5px border has been applied, right? So now if you can give 1px here, you can add 1px border here. You can add 10px border here. You can play with it. You can see the border there. Right. So instead of writing three different statements, you can write it in. This represents the border width. This represents the border style and this represents the color. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use dotted here instead of solid. I'm going to use dotted. If I go back and check the output, there is a dotted line which is available. Now 10 px is there. Let us give it as 2 px and check and you can see there are dotted lines available right so you can use different types of border styles now if i go here you can see different types of border 
it's available you can the visual studio code only itself tells you different types of things available here you can add all these things to make sure to give a good look for your website so this is how you can use border so let me keep it as solid and let's check the output once again yes the working it's working so now we are going to learn about margin the border is done now we are going to learn about margin now css margin properties are used to create space around elements outside of any defined borders but here the the spaces are not seen this is just a space this is not a content now css has properties for specifying the margin for each side of an element you can do it top you can do it right you can do it bottom you can do it left you can just see margin 25 px 50 px 75 px 100 px right you can add all the four of the things directly or if you want to add only few things per for a particular point of time then you can add only once you can set the margin property to auto to horizontally center the elements within its container element will then take up the specified width and remaining space will be split equally between left and right margin so let us check how it is done now here we have learnt about border right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add margin for this so i'm going to add margin top margin top i'm going to add 10 px and we'll check the output now if i see the output you can see 10 spaces have been left for margin now i know you can't see that much so what i'm going to give i'm going to give it as 30 px and let's check the output you can see margin top it has been given as 30 px and that is why there's a space created here and that is why you can see hello world is appearing here not here now i'm going to give margin left now margin left if I do margin left, maybe I'm going to give it as 30 px also. Again, go back from here. It has been appeared here. There's a lot of space here. So that is why you can use hello. You can use margin top. You can use margin left. If you want to place it to center, you can use 100 here, right? You can see 100. It has come here, right? Based upon the total number of px, you can actually do all the things now i'm going to use margin margin bottom will not affect because anyhow there's a lot of space between the top and the bottom so that is why it will not affect so i'm right will also not affect right so you can do all the things between margin like this or if you want to add all the things using one line you can add margin top margin right margin bottom margin left at one shot as well so that is what you can do with margin right when you just type margin over here you can get different types of margin properties available just like margin top right you have block and inline start inline and block start inline block shape scroll right there's around so many margin properties available you can use all these properties to give your give your website a good look so that is all about margin so next topic is padding now css padding properties are used to generate space around an element's content inside of any different borders this is not from the margin to the content this is from actually from the border and the content so inside the borders this margin out margin happens outside the borders padding happens inside the borders with css you have full control over the padding there are properties for setting the padding for each side of an element top right bottom and left you can add all the things directly also or you can add individual things right let us see an example here i have used margin right so i'll remove this margin now and i'm going to add padding so padding i'm going to add left first padding i'm going to add 30 px so i'll go back and check the output if i see the output now you can see there has been space created so this is what is padding left so if you want to know the if you want to know whether a website has been using margin or padding you can just go to inspect element where you can see their styling page where you can see whether it is padding or whether it is margin when you come down you can see when you write type padding you can see padding right bottom inline just like how margin had all the commands all the properties available just like that padding also has different ones can you can see this or uh, are you guys getting this yes so now when you give padding right right doesn't work because there's a too much space between the text and the right so i'm going to use top padding top i'm going to give it as 100 px so let's check the output you can see 100 px space has been given from the top to the 
from between the now if you apply border now you can see if you apply border may for p only i'll apply border once again border i'm going to give 1 px i'm going to give solid solid and color i'm going to give it as black when i use this now you can see the border has been increased in the top why because we have given padding top is equal to 100 now if i give padding top is equal to 10 and check the output you can see little space has been given right so the likewise you can give left also you can give 100 here and you can check the output you can see 100 space has been given from from the border in to the content there is a space generated but if you use margin over here it will not be inside the borders it will be outside the borders let me check the output and tell you instead of padding left i'm going to give it as margin left 100 px now go and check the output you can see the whole border is coming with the content but there is a space provided so that is the major difference between the margin and the padding right so but you you if you use padding once again here the whole border will not be moved instead the content will be moved from the border you can see the difference right that is why padding and the border is used padding border and margin all the three things can be used at once and make your website colorful and beautiful right so this is about padding so you can try it try different things and uh, observe the outputs and you will get to know what exactly is happening in the commands what exactly is happening in the css and css commands would be very useful to create your projects